Hey everybody, Good welcome evening. to our Goshen Hello. Preppin' live stream. Goshen Preppin'. It's not prepping, it's prepping. You have to say it with an apostrophe on the end. Okay. Prepping. So, we are live. We're here. It's a Sunday night thing. We have the whole crew, at least the crew that we usually have live. Yeah. We have Hannah. Hey. It's been a few uh, weeks since you were with us, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think I, we were solo for a while. Mm -hmm. We have our little pretty midgy pie. Little pretty midgy pie. Hey. We have Ashley. Hello. And we have some kind of alien toy for Midgey Pie. Here you go, Midge. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So we have our friends. We have Chillin' Penguin Army, Howdy Partner, Redfish Texas. Oh, he's the one that says Howdy. We have Storm Chase and Gal. We have At 3D. Hello. We have Brenda. Hello. We have Kathy Balmer. We have Ariel from the beautiful Wisconsin. We like Wisconsin. We do. Uh, Redfish says the cutie pie baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boris says woohoo in loud voices. Hello, <laughs> Boris. Scorpio Lifestyle from Omaha, Nebraska. Very nice. Checking in. Three Percenter, good to see you from Kentucky. Baby Doc, 2019. Hello. Grab the External Vigilance. Candy on the counter, or Teresa what? Springfield, they are coming so fast I can barely keep up. <laughs> I'll try to say them quickly. We have Richard, who I've just been emailing. AJ, Sherry, Heather. Yeah. That creative bug. Ooh. By the way, uh, if you see that creative bug on there, you want to ask a question or talk about something, it's always best you put at that creative bug because it goes so fast on my screen, I usually can't keep up, although I try. Yeah. All right, man, lots of people, oh, man, lots of people coming in. Pouring in, goodness. So I mean, it's a big topic. It is. I mean, I put out a couple like news bulletins uh, a few days ago as things started progressing, but then holy cow, it just really took off, and we knew something was coming. Did somebody yeah. just walk by? And no, the cat, no, the cat oh. is playing with a little like crumb of food. I thought I had some kind of ghost going behind me or something. I was yeah. like, I could have swore I saw something there. <laughs> it was oh, the cat. Was <laughs> yeah, my oh, hair. My I went, shh. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on because of this, and it's not just a Middle East, Middle East thing. And it's really interesting how Iran fired off so much garbage toward Israel, and the United States and Britain stopped it, but then they're saying we're not going to get involved. Yeah. We're involved already. Here we are. I mean, maybe the U.S. is not going to get involved as far as doing any attacking, but we're already involved. Uh, lots of moderators in the house, everybody. Say hello to our people in blue. Lots of them in there. Very nice. I really always appreciate uh, moderators in the house. Always get nice. Get them, people. <laughs> well, I don't know. People There's, are already getting blocked on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. already be, yeah. being uh, silly. From Clutch Cargo, the first question, should I take cash out of the bank? No, I accept cash. I accept, I accept checks also. <laughs> Just, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't think that's something you should stress about just yet, Clutch Cargo. Certainly keep an eye on it. We have not seen anything escalate to the point where we're going to see a run in the banks. And I know once that kind of happens, then we already at that breaking point. But I don't think that's we're even like quite there yet. Um, as I did a couple days ago and put out like a news alert, if I start seeing things happening, guys, I will put a news alert out to kind of warn everybody. And that's the whole fir first news alert was, guys, listen, we see our nuclear watchdogs in the sky coming through yeah. so it's time to put yourself in your faraday cage you know because we got to make sure that we're ready for all contingencies yeah storm chasing gal has the perfect prepping question how are the kitties um they're, they're ornery they're good they're, yeah, they're running around good. the house <clears throat> cats are nice meow is it safe to donate plasma on a regular basis if you're healthy oh sure yeah if you're healthy I mean, I can't remember what the protocols are for the plasma centers, but they'll tell you as far as how much you can donate. But yes, ultimately it is safer to do that. All right, so Grandma, Grandma Owl is here to see the adorable baby, so check that off her list. Yeah, she's pretty adorable. She is becoming so, yep. more and more grabby, more and more interactive. She's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like okay, good. Yeah, it's from Holly Rock. Um, can you please explain a nuclear warhead being intercepted like a Patriot missile when that create a wide nuclear fallout or EMP? All right, so what I got word from on the second video was we actually had an aero missile, not a Patriot. The Patriots are for short-term, short-distance uh, stuff. The arrows are for the long-term ballistic missiles, the long-range ones. And I got word that a ballistic missile was taken out by an arrow, which I 100% emphatically stand by that. However, if the warhead inside the ballistic missile was nuclear, that's, the, uh, that's what's up for debate. 
Um, you won't see anything in the news. It's not anywhere. But I, I mean, I don't have the stuff in front of me, but we actually have proof that there was something of the sort that was basically launched from Iran. And more than likely, what we think happened was <laughs> Iran launched a ballistic missile just to kind of keep Iran on edge or Iraq on or Israel on edge or to uh, possibly see if the arrows could take it down. And sure enough, it did. Now, if there was a nuclear warhead inside that missile and the arrow hit it, it would not cause a nuclear detonation. It would not cause nuclear fallout. However, it could cause basically what's called an airburst dirty bomb. And if that's the case, it could put nuclear material on the ground, which would be easily picked up and traceable. And it could obviously cause problems with food, drinking water, and making people sick. We're not seeing that. At least I haven't seen that as actually the case. So the aero missile that took down the ballistic missile from Iran probably had a dummy warhead in it just to kind of, it may like just kind of test to see what's going on. That seems to be what happened in that situation. Um, do I think the attacks will affect our markets? Honestly, right now, I don't think they will. The, the markets have actually been kind of simply... Uh, a little fluctuating anyway. I don't think we're going to see anything outside of the fluctuations unless we see more problems in the United States. Now, Iran is saying if anything happens, they're going to attack our bases. They've already been ta attacking our bases, so that's nothing new. The only thing we see changing here is it was a larger coordinated attack actually from Iran before. It's always been from proxies. And pe I actually had people comment and say, Iran was justified because they're retaliating against like their general or colonel killed. No, that's, United, that's Israel retaliating from the constant barrage of countless missiles coming from the Houthi and Hezbollah. Yeah. Who have been, I mean, think about it. In America, <clears throat> if we're sitting there and suddenly we start having missiles coming in from Canada, that's our neighbor, and I say that jokingly and lovingly, we have missiles coming from Canada, <clears throat> and then we take out a general in Canada, that's our retaliation. And then as they attack us, you can't say they're retaliating against us. No, that's simply them causing more problems. But anyway, um, Doan on the Homestead says, have you heard of a chemtrail buster and does it work or is it BS? I have not heard of a chemtrail buster. Is that something that takes some of the chemtrail stuff out of the air? If it is, I highly doubt it's going to work. I actually have um, videos up. You know, I try to put together videos. I have like collections of information. I have a big one about chemtrails coming up soon. But especially right now with everything, basically, it's like this. When, they, when there's war, you can't talk about anything else. Yeah. And not that we're a war per se, at least de facto we might be. Um, I even like already had the video coming out yesterday about <laughs> the sun and people wanted to castrate me. They're like, how dare you talk about the sun and sunspots? I was like, that video was already planned to come out. Yeah, that was out a couple days ago. So. Yeah, so it was already basically ready. Yeah, Rebek says, chemtrails, really? I mean, chemtrails are there, guys. They're not a conspiracy theory. They... The government admits they're putting these things in the air. What's being put in the air is what's for, what's up, is the question. Uh, Storm Jason Gal says, do you feel these attacks will affect our, I think it's markets. Markets, I already answered yeah, that. Markets. Oh, I just answered that one, yeah. Um, see, Knight said, who says, ni, I always appreciate you being here. What did you miss? Not really a whole lot. We've just been talking about as far as the, the very beginnings of the escalation, what's happening between Iran and Israel. Um, but the biggest thing, guys, no matter what we talk about with Iran and Israel, it comes down to how is it going to affect us in the United States. I mean, we can definitely talk about Iran and Israel, and I'm all for talking about geopolitics. It's one of my favorite things. But what do we have to do as preppers is the more important thing. So um, five ceilings. I live on the border of a strong police firefighter neighborhood in a major city. That's great. You think they might unify defend the neighborhood if crap hits the fan to defend their homes? Oh, I will. I will. Absolutely. Um, for myself, being in third world countries and such, one of the coolest things that you would find is the neighborhoods <clears throat> absolutely banded together and protected the communities. And granted, there were larger, I'm just going to use the term warlords without giving away where I was, um, who tried to control them, and they did. But nevertheless, when it came to crime and thieves and people trying to break in these areas, and especially if you see one clan trying to hit another yeah, the, the neighborhoods would band together. I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to see a lot of sheriffs coming into play. Um, I think we're going to see um, a lot of local municipalities. <clears throat> I'm not so much sure how the larger cities will f 
offend if that's the case. But out in the suburbs, for certain, I think we're going to see a lot of people doing that. I think the majority of people went into police and law enforcement was for the reason of protecting the people, you know, being there for protection. I'm not sure how many stand for that now once they've been in a while, but I believe that was at least their initial intention. Um, there was a question right underneath that. Yeah, I see it. With a number from Heather Murray. Hello, Heather. With the number of assets coming from Iran toward Israel continuously, do you think this could trigger Star Wars from either side? Well, I mean, are you talking about the Star Wars weapons as far as space weapons is what you're trying to get at? Um, could it actually trigger some kind of more war? For sure. I know that one of the things they really shoot for, no pun intended, is to try to overwhelm the Patriot missile batteries because the Patriots can only put out missiles so fast and let me put it this way, they can, I'm not going to give you a number, but let's say there's, t it could put out 10 Patriot missiles in 30 seconds. Well, if there's 12 missiles coming from the enemy, two are guaranteed to get through. Yeah. And that's what they do is, and when we see attacks coming in Israel, that's, that's what they figured out. Um, and the drones had the intention of, I mean, think, I want you to understand this. The drones had the intention of taking out the Patriot missile batteries. That's why they were doing this take out those Patriot missile batteries and the incoming cruise missiles and any type of larger ballistic missiles will come in without any problem. Not to mention the aero missile batteries too, which are much further range. Hi, hey, Teresa. Uh, what have you missed? Uh, not tons yet. We just got talking. Cynthia says sleeper cells have been activated. Yeah, I kind of wonder about that, Teresa, if that's the case. I really wonder how many attacks we're going to see in the United States once those sleeper mm -hmm. cells are wakened up for sure. Um, they still may be coordinating something. That, that was another. Yeah, yeah, the next question is actually um, from, will the sleeper cells be part of Iranian retaliation? Oh, that's a, I, don't, I don't see that. It's weird. Right. You, oh, no, no, like, yeah, 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 Sean yeah. Penguin Army. Yeah, will, they, will the sleeper cells be part of uh, Iranian retaliation? If Iran decides that the United States is truly fighting Iran in, the, in this war, then mm -hmm. guaranteed the sleeper cells are going to wake up. I think, personally, it's not going to be like, hey, sleeper cells, go cause damage. I think they're going to try to coordinate attacks in the United States. So far, Iran is trying to play nice. Do you know Iran sent a message to the United States and said, hey, by the way, we're not fighting you, but we're actually sending a low-level attack to Israel? Do you know that? And they're trying to make it, because they know America no matter how much we've weakened in our military power, we are still the military power in the United States, in the world. And they are they really are afraid of us. But on the same note too, Iran's not based on simply just political regimes or militarily, but also on religious regimes too. And we don't talk about religion on the channel. We're not gonna get into that by any means. We're not getting into religion, but we you have to understand that when it comes to Middle East fighting a lot of the Middle East fighting, especially when it comes to Iran, comes from a religion based, which puts it into a situation in which the fighting becomes more personal rather than simply just, mm -hmm. I get a paycheck in combat pay going into a battle. Yeah. Um, did you get any more messages on the shortwave system that was activated? Uh, the Phoenix, I have. But of course, the messages that come through are scrambled. Or they're in code, I should say. I can't decipher the code. I wish I could. I've seriously thought about trying to write it down and trying to figure it out, but it would be a waste of time. Uh, their code is really good. But they are certain. That's killing sorry, the microphone, by the way. Sorry. Bam! Um, no, there is certainly a lot of flash traffic coming through still. A lot of it. And I would come through with another live stream or like at least a quick video you know, like earlier today. But I haven't seen anything that warrants, hey, try to get our buddies yeah. in a frenzy. You know, you know me. I try to be level-headed. Let's try to look at it. I want to keep up on information coming in, but I haven't seen anything that's escalating. What's going on? Siren. You hear a siren? Was yeah. there a siren? You yeah. heard it too, yeah. right? Okay. I, hear a, I hear a helicopter going overhead. Maybe you that's what it is. We don't have air traffic We normally. almost never have aircraft out here. Our windows are open, so maybe that's And why. I think twice it's, it was in the last five years we've had sirens. Yeah. Twice, maybe? Yeah, because there was a fire yeah. down the way. <laughs> There's something. Is that music in the boys' room? It could be the music in the boys' room. <laughs> it's a car? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Naomi. Sorry. Unidentified noises makes us worried. All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I know. So, Jeff, what's your take on the people in Dearborn, Michigan that are shouting death to America in the streets? 
Well, how about this? How about the people who in Chicago rallied together and were cheering Israel being attacked? I mean, granted, that's Israel, this is America, but nevertheless, I mean, obviously, we have the First Amendment in the United States, the freedom of speech, and these <coughs> idiots are allowed to go ahead and do that. But, you know, here's the thing. There's a big difference between freedom of speech and actually having threats that could be taken as illegal. Yeah. Well, if you don't like it, then move somewhere or other country. Like, you don't have to live here in America where we're free. But they're here to take over America. Oh, I know. But I mean, that's saying. That, listen, I'm not saying they'll succeed. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. But that there are people in America who want to take down America and turn it into whatever they want it to be. Yeah. That's why they're here. Um, we got a super chat. Oh, we did? We it's did. a super sticker. Oh, it's a super sticker. Sorry. Marvin Jacobs for four dollars. guess I don't know the difference. Oh, next, actually, let's see the next one first. I'm Kelly, and I grow it. I'm Kelly, and I grow it. Well, thank you for the super chat, awesome. Marvin. Yeah, thank you, Marvin. I'm still getting there. Actually, it doesn't even pop up on mine. I know. That's why uh, I Do you think the war will come here? I 100% believe it's going to come here. In what way or manifestation? Difficult to say. I believe NATO is going to get involved one way or another. It may not be necessarily for the Middle East, even though it's going to happen there too. But I will. I do believe it is going to come here. And honestly, that is one of the things I'm concerned about. And one of the things I prep, prep about also. Um, how about now we're discussing if crap it's fan is an EMP and we're not home, perhaps in different spots altogether. Yeah, and that's on, on a good note. I want you to understand this is one of the things. I mention this on the live streams all the time. And please listen to me very carefully. If an EMP hits and your car stalls out and you have a brand new car, a newer car, 95% of them will start right back up again and still drive. It is a complete wives' tale that cars past a certain year won't run anymore. That's not true. 5% of them-ish will not run anymore. But since your car is not plugged into the grid, which is going to take the brunt of the ions, the current from the EMP, it's not going to transfer it to your car. That's what it comes down to. Now, if your car is at home, especially if it's like an electric car plugged in, forget it. Kiss that car goodbye. But we talk about this all the time. I remember Ashley a few years and I were back. We were at a store. I think it was a thrift store. And it was like really deep way in the back. And the power went out in the thrift store. Oh, yeah. And I was like, power out? Immediately go to the front. And I'm looking to see if cars had stalled out too. Yeah. If they hadn't? I was like, okay, it's just yeah, a power right. outage. <laughs> so that's the thing. You will see power going out. You'll see the grid crashing. But cars will stall out, but they'll start right back up again, which is a good thing. That's a really good thing. Because if you are traveling somewhere... Providing the gas in your tank will get you there because if we see an EMP, gas stations, they're not going to be working anymore. And that's why I always say, make sure that wherever you go, you have at least enough, plenty of more gas to get home. And so like last time we traveled to a tournament, it was three and a half hours away. Four. Four hours away. Yeah. As soon as we got there, well, we still had plenty of gas in the car, but as soon as we got there, I filled up in gas before the tournament, yeah. so that way we could, we could make sure we get home. Connie asked if her hubby drives a big rig, will that be affected by the EMP? No, oh, no, not at all. I see where you're getting at. Now, the big rig itself is not going to be doing it. Um, it really is. The amount of uh, distance of power lines is the biggest thing when it comes to the EMPs that really we have to worry about. And I know EMPs are a very fearful thing, but EMPs, uh, you'd be amazed at least on your on your cars and devices, you know, here's sitting my phone. If my phone's sitting here and it's not near a wall, because it could arc from the wall, by the way, from your outlets, and it's not plugged in, my phone will still work. Granted, you're not going to connect to a. <laughs> She's like, I will. You're not going to connect to a phone tower. They're going down, but at least you could take pictures of the event. Why not take pictures? Yeah, um, she's going to drop see. that and break it so the case isn't on there. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Daddy stole your phone. Yeah, I, I fell in, you're going to laugh, I fell in my, one of our creeks today. <laughs> we have a creek on our property, a few, a natural spring. Hey. And I was out there getting stuff done. In fact, making a video for this week. And I stepped off a rock, and I thought it was like harder ground, but it was all mushy mud. And I fell right backwards, right into the creek. And I just cracked up laughing. But I was like covered in mud. And his phone was in the mud. My phone, my firearm, all this stuff completely caked in mud. And it was not, it was like swampy kind of. One of this creek, by the way, is a beautiful creek. I mean, it's gorgeous. But there's a couple of parts where it hits like kind of swampy. And it was the swampy part I fell in. <laughs> and it kind of smelled. Uh, M. Burton says, could you do a stream sometime and discuss bird flu? What is the origin? Air, water, soil, virus, bacteria, how it's spread? 
Um, is I didn't get the first part, Hannah. Do you want me to like talk about it now? No, he said, no. could you in the future do a stream on it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, and here I will say this very quickly, and it doesn't necessarily line up just necessarily with a bird flu, but any virus. Let me let me tell you what's going on. Uh, years ago, I was a college professor in a nursing school. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And we get into epidemiology and immunology and talk about viruses and how incredible these things are. And I would tell them, I said, you have to understand, here's, you need to realize that the medical community, we are waiting for a virus to mutate and cause a major plague. Of course, was the term I always used, it's a plague. Um, the problem with viruses is when they go between species. And that's what you need to keep in mind. Always keep in mind. We have the flu in America. It catches it from one grandpa to the next grandpa, to a grandma, and it's going from human to human to human. If we see something going from like a bird to a cow to a person, or we often see, honestly, for some reason, the bats and pigs are some of the biggest things that literally make the virus more virulent, cause more problems. But the bird flu in itself, I mean, obviously it can be, I'm not gonna lie, it is, can be problematic for having giant bird flocks. Of course it can. I think calling off all the birds because of it, that's what's in question. But when we see it going from birds to humans, and if you see it then going from human to human, that's when you yeah. need to worry. That's what we look for, and that's what you have to worry about. Because when it starts going human to human, that's when, when you go trans species, and then it becomes contagion within that species. That's what we watch out for, because those are the ones that are typically the deadly ones. Uh, Eternal Vigilance says the markets will be affected on Monday. Yeah, I'm not saying no, but personally, I don't think it's going to be anything huge. My, I'd say, if anything, they'll probably go down a little bit for a few, couple days and come right back up again. But I guess we'll find out. I still don't see the super chat. I'm going to scroll down. There, it is not on my screen at all. Interesting. Oh, here, it oh, here it is. You scroll fast. So Marvin Jacobs gave us the pair with a cup of coffee. Yes. Thank you, Marvin. Four bucks. I appreciate super chats, guys. They're always good. They help out our family, help us buy equipment, help us buy computers, all those things, help pay bills and stuff. So uh, even though we're not asking for them, we always appreciate them. Just saying thank you. Uh, Dance Rules says, what are good ways to keep cool in hot summers if the grid goes down and no generator? Yeah, the only best way to keep cool is an evaporative cooling. That's the scientific term for it. So your skin, your body knows, it's pretty smart, that when you get hot, let's sweat. And that way when the sweat yeah. evaporates and any time you take a liquid to a gas, it cools you off. Um, so you sweat for that reason. If you sweat in a hot slash humid area doesn't help too much out west it works great you know that way like it feels like you know, i feel like i'm in an oven yeah. you know, as the term <laughs> is because the sweat basically comes right off of you so having a circulation having a excuse me some type of breeze coming across you is good and using some kind of moisture to be able to evaporate off you is one thing too it still may not be enough the best way to cool down because water let's say it's 90 degrees outside you go find some kind of creek or pond or whatever the case may be, it's not going to be even close to 90, even on a warm day. The best way to keep cool is immerse yourself in water. However, the big problem is, is I don't care what water you pick. It could be pool water. It could be bath water. It could be ocean water. It has a higher salinity than the water inside of you. And so, therefore, by osmosis, it will drain water out of you. So your key is you want to make sure you get in some kind of body of water to keep cool. That's always a good thing. And then you need to rehydrate with liquids because it will actually pull the liquids out of your body. That's why when you get out of the bath, your skin looks amazing. Oh, look at it. Everything's like, because it literally sucked a lot of the water out of your skin. It's actually a model's trick, by the way. A lot of models, before they go for a picture shoot, will soak themselves in water. Or the same thing happens with a mud mask or some type of mask. Yeah. It sucks the water out of the face temporarily and makes the skin tighter so you look better. So you look beautiful. So we're going to look great during the apocalypse. <laughs> no water. Let's <laughs> um, try that. I'm Kelly and I grow it. Says, best way for my son to get home from Tennessee to Connecticut, Connecticut if crap hits the fan. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, that's tough. I'll tell you right now what I'm doing is literally, Ashley and I were going through and inventorying my, my get home bag. 
And anytime we go anywhere in the car, short term, we have a get home bag for short term. For long term, we have a long term get home bag, which has more essential stuff in it. I suggest that he has a backpack mm -hmm. with the essentials of having, I don't say a shelter like a tent, even though I'm a tent kind of person sometimes, maybe having a bivy, having some kind of sleeping bag, and having a lot of the food and everything, having a way to protect himself, literally if he's going backpacking. Now, on a good note, if he's in Tennessee coming up in Connecticut, mm -hmm. going along the, the Appalachian Trail is the way to go. Um, there's lots of like little things to eat along the way and it stays away from a lot of the major crime areas So that might be one of the best bets, but at the very least plan out a way to get back Providing cars aren't working for whatever reason or you know crap really hits the fan that there's no gas and such I if I lived in Tennessee and had to get home to Connecticut the Appalachian Trail would be it it's a get ready for a long walk, and that's why he needs a pretty serious backpack. I don't know if he has that, but it sounds like a gift you might want to pick him up. That we're all backpackers in this family. We, in fact, what we're planning for this summer, we're planning a bunch of camping trips and backpacking mm -hmm. trips, and we're going to bring along Goshen Prepping because we never do this kind of stuff. We're always filming in the house and around the house and stuff, but we're going to take it along so that way it can show you a lot of things we do while we actually camp and backpack which is actually really good strategies a lot of people know about, don't know about. So that's our plan yeah, this summer. Yeah, that's what we've been working on. All right. Um, oh, hey, that's actually the question I just saw, Hannah, so I'm like caught up. Oh, okay. Very nice. Okay. Um, Steve-O says, I still don't understand. What are the purpose of chemtrails? All right. Now, there's different ways to look at chemtrails. There is like the deep-rooted conspiracy theory of chemtrails that they are putting those up to, to kill the human population. I'm not saying it's not true. I, I mean, it's hard to say if it's actually true or not. I, I, however, most of the chemtrails in which right now the government flat out admits that they do it, and they plan on keep doing it, putting chemicals in the air to try to put a shelter around the, the, the world to make it so it blocks the sun to cool off our global warming. That is literally the plans they have in action. I'm not kidding you. Now, back in the 50s and 60s, I'm pretty sure the 60s, we certainly, this is not hyperbole, this is proof, we actually had planes spraying aluminum, iodized aluminum in the atmosphere, which is a chemical. Listen, I mean, it's a metal, but it's a chemical to seed clouds to try to change weather patterns. This is, you know, came out of DARPA, the, the military's defense initiative, and it's absolute truth of things we've done. Are you gonna get ready to take off? Because we do the thing real quick. Yeah. Um, now the chemtrails, are there chemicals to try to kill us purposely? The main chemtrails we know of specifically are there to literally try to change our climate. That's why they're doing it. They're not hiding it. They're saying that's exactly what they're doing. Where are you going, Hannah? She's getting a toy. All right. So real quick, guys, we're going to go to more questions. Hannah's gone. But like we always like to do, we're going to take a quick moment for our sponsor, American Reserves, which we love. And what we've been doing for the past, well, this is our second week now, is we've been going through some of their freeze-dried food. I've never tried their freeze-dried food ahead of time, so the reaction on my face is going to tell it all. <laughs> Last time we tried strawberries, and, they were and the reaction was awesome. Apples. Ooh, I love, I love um Freeze-dried freeze apples. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think you were here last always, week to try it. So, guys, I know a lot of people like our Debbie Downers on sponsors, but, you know, they help us pay the bills and stuff, and I like their stuff. I will never take on a sp sponsor that we don't like the of stuff I don't believe in. Yeah. So I believe in freeze-dried apples. All right, all right, here we go. Somebody asked who we are and what our relationship is. Oh, okay, good. Somebody. I am Eric. Um, I'm king of the castle. <laughs> That's what we call me. Uh, Ashley is my beautiful wife. This is our second eldest daughter, Hannah. Hello. Hello, Hannah. We have a whole house full of kids, which we don't put on the channel. We have, and it's all the way down to our little baby here, Midgey Pie. Yep. Um, that's You'll her, see that's her. her. That's her nickname, by the way. And so people are saying, I don't. I thought you didn't put family on the channel. I don't think somebody's going to drive by and say, Hey, come here, Midgey Pie. She's not going to respond. Yeah. You know, or like we were about abductions, we were about people stopping by the house, that kind of stuff. Soon, you're not going to see her on the channel. Yeah, anymore. she's getting she's getting borderline for not being there. But you'll either see our oldest daughter or her that help us with the with the videos on chats. Ah, that's a big 
freeze dried apples. So we'll try at the same time. You want to try one? Midgey, you want one? I don't know. She probably could eat one, couldn't she? She probably could, yeah. Look at her. Hey, she's like, I will take one. Want to give her that one? Uh, no, I'll give her this one. Okay, everybody ready? Mm -hmm. Freeze dried apples, everybody. Here we go. Like them? You know what I love about freeze dried fruit? Oh, they're good. You can fill your salivary glands because of the citric acid screening mm -hmm. in your mouth. Midgey likes them. That's good. Are they good? Oh, they're good. I like them. I'll be honest with you. I always want to be straightforward. They're good. I'm not going to say they're not good. I impressioned uh, it was something sweeter. But it's probably good it's not sweeter. I agree. Right? Yeah. Strawberries, though, last week. Oh, my gosh. They were so good. Oh, yeah. The strawberries. Maybe that's why I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. Uh, the strawberries, like, mm. They're good, though. Uh, standard man. Uh, Iran was a lot more normal pre-67. Oh, yeah, too. Same thing with Beirut and everything. It was like the luxury area of the Middle East. And all this stuff comes in. It's all trash now. It's horrible. Um, clutch cargo for three hours. I've heard many helicopters flying around North Carolina. You know what amazes me, clutch cargo and everybody else too, is once I put out those alerts of things that are happening, <laughs> <laughs> the amount of messages I got from people talking about jets taking off, military jets yeah. taking off quickly. I had a good friend of mine who from a near air by Air Force Base where he lived, saw Air Force Two take off. I heard from another person, Air Force One took off from Andrews. I mean, some of that stuff, we have to, unfortunately, we have to speculate that they probably have Biden or Harris on board. <laughs> Maybe Air Force Two is like, I'm out of here, and just left her there. You know? <laughs> That'd be cool. But we've seen a lot of military active activity taking place in the United States recently, a lot. So I am always, always appreciate you guys letting me know what you right. see. That's a good thing. Uh, oh, Red, uh, Redfish Texas says, Hey, Doc, my 8 and 10-year-old said to say hi. They missed the kids' channel, but understand. Oh, hey, well, hi, guys. Hey, Redfish Texas. Sorry, kids. Yeah, we've talked about it numerous times, how we like to have a kids' channel, but like even today, as I fell in my creek. <laughs> and no, we did not get that on film. Somebody else asked that. My, uh, my daughter was with me. I don't even like telling the age of her anymore, but she was out there with me, just hanging, me. Out, hanging out with Dad in one of our fields. Oh, boy. And she thought it was so fun when Dad fell in that creek. I, I cracked up, too. I thought it was hilarious. I was covered in murky mud and stuff. And so, uh, anyway, she thought it was, like, the funniest thing. It's Those are the family memories, you know what I'm saying? So, obviously, it's all about keeping the kids safe, which I understand you know that's the case, too. I wish I really wish I could put them on. I love showing my family. I love my family. We're just a fun family, family type people. They said Bob is MIA. Yes, he moved. He is no longer in the vicinity. So, so we're, vacation. we're setting up a more permanent dojo in the house to be able to practice phone, to practice martial arts and such. And Bob, he was just kind of chatting with me and said he'd like to move down there permanently. And I said, Bob, you got it. So Bob's gone. We got a super chat. We did? Yes. All right. Did? Yes. Oh, yeah, we did. I, not on here. It's towards the bottom. I'm at the very bottom. Then go back then up. Go up. Up, up, up. There, up. You there go. we go. There we go. <laughs> Cats are nice. Meow. Four ninety nine. Thank you very much. Cats are nice. Cats are nice. Is it safe to sell a house in Rhode Island than buy a house in Rhode Island by November of this year? Also, how worried should I be about squatters? Oh, you're... Yeah. I, you're first off, let me go to the squatter one. You should be worried about squatters. And I've been researching the state laws about squatters. And there's a whole bunch of states... Just, just Google it, guys. There's like 21 states have squatters' rights to the houses. Yeah, it's pretty sad. But a lot of them are actually, they have to be there for like seven years before oh, really? it becomes their house, okay. things like that. So it's not always like right away. Um, is it safe to sell a house in Rhode Island by another house in Rhode Island? Personally, if it were me, I would not sell my house and then buy another one. I, right now, there's, I, would, I would tell, for me and my family, no way we would do that. If we want to move to a different house... Then, because here's the thing, so houses are selling like hotcakes right now. I would actually find a house, and you may not be in that position where you can mm -hmm. possibly afford a double mortgage for like a few months. But personally, I would find the other house first, buy the house, and then put the one up you're in for yeah. sale. You don't want to be living in a motel and something go wrong, and then you're in really big trouble. All right, I'm going to scroll back up because I went in the super chat. But anyways, thank you very much for the super yes, chat. Yes, thank we you. appreciate it. Um, oh boy, I went too far back. Boy, I'm totally messed up in here. Um. <clears throat> Tyler says, an EMP, yeah, probably, but when and who? I mean, I, I agree with that, Tyler. Because to get an EMP up in our atmosphere requires an ICBM, 
which alerts NORAD and alerts all of our forces that there's an incoming ballistic missile, which you're going to think nuke, and it's going to cause retaliation. So EMPs, I'm not saying no. They very well could happen. But understand, that's going to be the least of the worries because then we're heading into nuclear war, if that's the case, more than likely anyway. Um. That's scary. Dio says, uh, my grandpa was in World War II and went over on D-Day. That's mm. awesome. It's a good grandpa right there. He always told us that we would have to worry about war in the country eventually. Mm. That is true. true. And guys, the thing is, I grew up with that idea of war in this country too on our soil. But now that we're seeing all the stuff happening right in my eyes, I, can't, I still can't believe it. But even though I've been prepping for decades, I still can't believe we're here. I can't believe it. I mean, 20 years ago I prepped and I was like, oh, I'm prepping just in case. But... Eh, nothing's going to happen. Now I'm like, here it is right in front of our face. It blows my mind. Do I think they'll attack at night? Oh, for sure they'll attack at night. Yeah, that's, that's what they like to do. Are they, are they saying is, they're going to attack nocturnal. nocturnal. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think they're talking about like a sleeper cell attack in the oh, United okay, States. Oh, got it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, fuel will probably spike Monday, then come back down. That's true. We've been seeing this fuel fluctuate also. And guys, I'll say this so many times. If I missed your question or statement, um, please put it at that creative bug. But I, I'll come back. I'm not, I am purposely, I would never ignore anybody's question. It's hard to keep up with all the comments. Oh, uh, there is. Yeah, yeah it exactly is. right. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah, from Natasha. Hello, Natasha. You've probably talked about this before. How do you deal with human waste during Crap It's the Fan? Well, that's where the crap part comes from, Crap It's the Fan. Um, and by the way, Guys, I have no problem personally saying shit hits the fan. I say that kind of low. YouTube flagged me once for saying that on the channel. I'm like, really? Yeah. Anyways. It didn't matter. Um, all right. So taking care of human feces, and I will tell you this as a physician, should be one of your priorities if that happens. Now, another reason we live out here in the middle of nowhere is because we have a leach field and a septic system. It is not city sewage. Um, I, I'm not saying that like, ha we have this. I'm not doing the brag. But that, it's, that's such an important thing that was on our list we'd make sure we did. In fact, as soon as we moved in, we had it redone. Actually, well, we, re, we redid it. Um, you're going to have to find a way to dispose of the human feces, preferably so it never your sees, the, and sees the light of day. Uh, yeah, that too. So it doesn't just your fruits and veggies. Yeah, keep your neighbors from pooing on your carrots. That's your. That's Ashley's moral her story. No, a lot of people use their human race for their Yeah, human, human ore? Yeah. I, I mean, they say if you let it go ahead and culture for a year, it's safe. But I, guys, human waste is some bad, bad. The bacteria in there is really bad stuff. So if you are going to use human waste, make sure you let it sit for a year and die down. Even then, I personally, I don't trust it. That's not what I do. I just the thought of eating something you, I yeah, don't know what know. properly word to use, does not sound appetizing. All right. But here's your best bet. Your best bet is to find a place in your yard, dig a hole literally as deep as you can go, and that's going to become your poopoo hole. That's I'm sorry, that sounds horrible. Like it's, it's, like it's not your poopoo hole. That's something different. <laughs> it's like a porta pot. Just porta pot. Right. And if your you can put pot. like a tent around it so you go to the bathroom in there. <laughs> Just and then, out the house. <laughs> and then what you do is as soon as you go, you take a little bit of dirt and cover up so there's no surface area of your poop exposed. Then you continuously poo and fill up that hole. Then as you're getting close to the top, it's time to dig your next hole. And that's your best bet if you do. Now, if you have you live in an apartment, that's why you get a big slingshot from your balcony <laughs> and make it your neighbor's problem who's always like playing guitar at 3 o'clock in the morning. No, we just kidding. think it's a monkey. It's all right. <laughs> but I, listen, obviously I'm joking about that. But if you're in an apartment, that could be, it could be bad. Yeah, could you be bad. need to get it out of your apartment. It must get out. You cannot leave it around. It causes major sanitation issues and disease. That's all there is to it. I mean, cholera, it's really funny. Cholera is not from poo, but cholera is from a tainted well. And so people will have cholera. And back in the day, the, all the townsfolk would actually get water from the same well. And the person who had cholera got the water and now contaminated the well. Now the whole town has cholera because of that. It, poo, again, does not cause cholera specifically, but... That's what you have to look at. It's going to cause disease. So you need to find a way to get rid of it. A lot of people, what they'll do is they have a compost toilet in their house. They'll poo and then put sawdust on it. It works the same way. And then they'll bag it up afterwards. So that's a possibility too. Yeah. But Here, you you'll, you'll need to uh, make sure that you um, 
have lots of bags and lots of sawdust if that's the case. Uh, let's see. Okay. What happened? Did she choke a little bit? Yeah. No more apples. Huh? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she spit it at me. <laughs> from Phil, will we see anything here with the Israel war? I, I believe that we're going to see... That, all right, so if you want my idea of what I think is going to happen, I think we're going to see the entire Middle East falling into war. I'm afraid to say that. And because of the radical viewpoint of a lot of people fighting in the war, it's going to make the people here in America... The, the radical people from those countries bringing it to the states. Now, will it be like an official war declared with soldiers on the ground outside of sleeper cells and the soldiers that are like hiding, hiding out right now? Maybe not, but we're definitely going to be seeing attacks in the U.S. I can pretty much guarantee that. Um, let's see. I know, I kind of lost the... Uh, from from yeah. Ad M, I deeply question any animal virus claims where they excuse to kill animals for food control. I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I completely no, agree. No uh, let's see. I'm kind of going through questions, guys. No, it's, it's hard. My, my mouse stopped working and I can't scroll. There's that and, like, big letters. So maybe uh, Chill and Penguin Army. Chill and Penguin Army, I always love your questions. Our current regime, I love how you put that, keeps trying to put a leash on Israel. How long before Israel tells us to take a hike? And if they do, what will be the consequences? Personally, I think it's a matter of a day or two. I That... In this, understand a lot of the armament of Israel came from the United States, but from regimes who were actually more friendly to the Israelis. Um, we're already seeing the regime right now saying, oh, we know you were just massively attacked with drones and cruise missiles and stuff, but that just be happy you didn't. Oh, you know, I have, actually have a quote. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, so here's some of the things we saw. I don't know if you know it. But Biden let the U.N. sanctions on Iran for the missiles expire just before the attack. There was 185 drones, 36 cruise missiles, and 110 surface-to-surface -surface missiles launched. 99% of it was stopped from Israel, U.S., Britain, and Lebanon. And most of that stuff was actually shot down over Jordan, Syria, and Iraq before it even hit Israel. Hezbollah and Houthi joined in the attacks. And we see numerous places around the world them erupting in other attacks. Like there's protesters in Chicago erupted in cheers after Tehran launched the attack in Israel. Iran was simply just claiming self-defense, but their proxies through Hezbollah and Houthi were the ones that actually were causing it in the first place. Uh, Biden told Netanyahu, this is a win. Don't retaliate. That's what Biden told him. Really? Uh -huh. Seriously? But Netanyahu says, no, we are going to respond in kind. And now the war cabinet has now supported a powerful response because of this. With that, the IDF has already struck Hezbollah sites just north of the border. In the meantime, the Germany's foreign minister says Iran's attacks put the entire region at risk of plunging into chaos. And the Gulf states in the area feel a full war is going to break out. And now Russia is moving in with supersonic missile warship to the Middle East to back up Iran. Um, other statements I saw, interesting if they are to you, they said Ronald Reagan would actually would have hit Iran before the attack even happened. Uh, Iran now is threatening U.S. base attacks if Washington backs the counterattack. Now, Iran attack on Israel has prompted police responses in D.C., Elling, and New York to go on alert. And Biden said he won't support an Israeli counterattack. But a lot of, we've already given billions of dollars to Iran because of this. Have you really lot, given that much money to uh -huh. Iran? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So it's just some different things in the news that we're looking at. That this is uh, basically, we're already, we're already, hands are already dirty in this. And I think we already know that. Um, this regime or not, we're also in a spot where it doesn't matter. Iran hates us. Iran has openly said that they would like to nuke Israel. Iran has openly said they would like to nuke the United States. And I believe that a lot of stuff we saw between infiltrating with so many drones, surface-to-surface -surface, um, missiles and um, cruise missiles were all to try to overwhelm. Well, I think a lot of it was still a test. The amount of drones that were sent over is nothing compared to what they have. And from the intelligence that I know, I'm not in the game anymore, guys, but I still have friends. The intelligence that I've heard chatter from my friends that they believe that Iran has six nukes. That's what they believe. I can't corroborate that. Nobody can. I wouldn't doubt it, though, that they have six go. nukes. We're 
done. What? Good night, everyone. Are you? Are I'm you gonna, out? I'm gonna go out. She's, She's done. Done. She's getting fussy. It's uh, bedtime for her. Mm-hmm. Nope, you're good. And you can move over, though. Hey. Come move over. Apple remnants everywhere. Here, did you want this? Thank you. Yep, yep. Uh, Rita says, if you're close enough to the nuclear epicenter, your electronics will fry. Russians set the wiring of their trucks on fire with line of sight EMP effects. Yeah, I mean, America, we have line of sight EMP weapons as well. But here's the thing. You ready for this? If you're close enough to the nuclear epicenter for your stuff to get fried with the EMP, then you're already going to get caught in the super fire anyway, and an EMP is at least your worries. Just FYI. Um, oh, yeah. When do the newsletter be coming out? I'm working on it. I'm really excited about this. I wanted to have it out today, so that I'll be the first to admit that I did not get it out today. So I'm trying to debate. Maybe I'll ask your opinion, guys, real quick. A uh, poll. Would you? I was thinking about putting it out on Sundays. Since I didn't make the deadline of today, would you like to have it out this week sometime, or would you want just? Would you be happy to wait till next Sunday? Yeah. So that's a polling question I'm going to ask all of you. Uh, but thank you by, by asking about that. By the way, I'm very excited about the newsletter. It's really fun. Deborah says, "Is it too late to start prepping?" Never too late to start prepping. Um, I have a video going to be coming out probably this week that talks about when you see that it's too late to start prepping is when things happen. It's like this. You ready? I've been prepping literally for decades, literally for decades, and I'm still prepping. I'm still prepping. So it's one of those things where it's a life-changing thing that you do. Throughout your life, you change your lifestyle and make sure you prep all the time. But let's say that crap hits the fan tomorrow, but tonight you're at Sam's Club, you buy a bag of rice. That's one bag of rice that's going to help you out when crap hits the fan. So it's never too late. Keep going. Even when crap's hitting the fan, it's just starting right now. Hey, guys, let's go to the grocery store and we're able to buy stuff. Prep. Keep going, guys, until you cannot do it ever. Uh, A lot of people are saying next Sunday. There's a couple people, a few that say, oh, go ahead and do one this week, but most are saying next Sunday. Um, From, is it JCG Greswell? Is it worth using a man-pack shortwave radio military issues from the late 90s? Do you think it'll pick up more? The answer to your question of, of is, it, is it worth it? Probably so. Will it pick up more? Not from the other shortwave radios that you can get on the civilian market that can pick up the same frequencies. The problem is this. You can't, for a lot of shortwave radios, like I've got a bunch of those little crank radios in, in their house. I love these things. They're good for weather. They're good for listening to radio and news and stuff. And they have shortwave on there, but the shortwave is pretty useless. It'll never pick up those military channels. You need a serious shortwave to pick up the military frequencies. Now, if you do get one of those cool packs, which they are very cool, mind you, and you could probably have a tank run over that thing and it won't break, um, it'll help you get those frequencies without having to buy the civilian unit. But you're not going to find any difference between the military and the civilian unit because even if you're talking about having the scrambled stuff, they're not going to have it in the scrambled pack anymore. They will definitely not sell it to you in that for fashion. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, I had to refresh my screen, so most of my comments are gone. That's right. But there was a super chat from... Oh, there's a super chat? Here. Yes. Okay, I'll look on yours. Thank you. Just turn it my way. It's from uh, Viorica. Viorica. I really ask your forgiveness trying to pronounce your name. But a super chat for 690. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Sending you love and appreciation from Ottawa. How cool. No, thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Guys, I will tell you that our entire purpose of Goshen Prepping is to get information out to people. You know, um, We've been prepping, like I said, for decades. I've been YouTubing for a long time. But I never really put out prepping stuff because, I, honestly, I found a lot of our viewers probably weren't going to follow along with it. But when start, things started going bad, I was like, you know, I was talking to Ashley. I said, I think a lot of people could really benefit from some of the stuff I could talk about. Then she goes to start doing prepping videos, and the rest is history. So it really is about putting out information to you guys. Not that I'm perfect or know everything about it, but... <coughs> Excuse me. But I was a previous teacher, prior teacher. I think I'm able to present information in a way that actually makes sense to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some things, obviously, about prepping that I know quite a bit about. But I, you never know everything. I love learning stuff, too. Sometimes I come across, there's been times where I put stuff on the channel and somebody goes, oh, that's not true. Actually, here's one thing I put on the channel. Are you ready? Coffee is the most consumed beverage on the planet. I literally read that one one time. And I, when I read things, I, I, my memory, I just, they're locked in. I memorize stuff like that. I was like, oh, interesting. 
And I put that on the channel one day, and a guy goes, oh, no, sir, tea is the most consumed beverage on the planet. I go, really? I looked it up, and I was like, and I responded, I was like, I stand corrected, you're right. Tea is the most consumed beverage. So I don't know where I read that before that coffee was. Hmm. Yeah. Something, that it, was a, it was a bed of lies, apparently. A bed of lies, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, no, I lost uh, it. Where'd see. it go? Okay. Uh, can you comment on possible intersections between Israel, Russia, and China? Oh, I'm happy to comment on that. We absolutely, emphatically, and please listen to me very carefully, just like in World War II, we saw dividing lines being drawn between the Axis and the Allies. The same thing is happening now. End of story. You need, this is so blatantly clear. Anybody who doesn't see this is blind. And it's not simply just NATO versus Warsaw Pact. You know, the East Bloc Warsaw Pact doesn't exist anymore, but Russia does. NATO still does, obviously. And the Baltic states lived under Soviet rule. And that's why they were like, holy crap, we're joining NATO as fast as we can. It's really funny because people talk bad about NATO. NATO has never forced anybody to join NATO ever. But yet, Russia has numerously forced people into Russia, Soviet stuff, including what they're trying to do with Ukraine right now. But we're seeing the dividing line being drawn again. On one side, we have, I'm just gonna go ahead and say NATO and Israel some other countries too. On the other side, you have Russia and China. You have the BRICS nations, first of all. Brazil, not playing a huge part into it. Russia, India is actually starting to side more with America in some ways too, even though they actually have the financial pact with Russia. China and South Africa are part of this. North Korea is part of this. But you'd be amazed, even though Russia is getting stuff from North Korea, how much North Korea still wants to be isolated even from the other Soviet countries, the other communist countries, I should say. It's pretty amazing. But Russia and Iran has direct ties. It is very, and there's, they're not hiding that at all. In fact, a lot, Russia was the first country to really use drones in an attack on Ukraine and got those drones from Iran, the same drones that were just launched into Israel. And so we see a very clear demarcated line and the countries taking sides with these. What frightened me, by the way, as I was watching a lot of the stuff happen live in the last 48 hours, were the countries like Qatar and Kuwait who said, United States, you are not using our territory to launch an attack in Iran. Considering, you know, in 91, in the Gulf War, we were there because Kuwait was attacked and we liberated them. But now they're basically giving the finger to the United States and saying, nope, we're not doing it. And I get it. A lot of those countries are very frightened of Iran and the attacks that we'll be doing on them. But we're certainly seeing a demarcated line taking place again with World War III. And it, it blows my mind how many people say things like, oh, you're a fear monger and there's no World War III coming. This isn't fear mongering. This is literally my head's not buried in the sand and I'm looking around. And we see more countries getting involved now than we saw pre-World War II. And that's a fact. That's not hyperbole, that's not simply speculation. There are more countries involved now fighting against two sides than before World War II. So I, that's what, like, guys, and then on top of that, we do not have a strong leader in this country. We don't have a leader at all in this country as far as I'm concerned. And so therefore, who's guiding the United States? Who's guiding the, side, the people on our side? It's turning into chaos. And our enemies are laughing at this, very happy that we're heading into a situation that is going to end with direct tax on our soil. I believe that's what's going to happen because I believe people who are in charge right now are the ones who are allowing that to happen by first opening up the border and saying, hey, guys, come on, come on, come on, guys, come on, guys. And then I, as I put out, the Texas National Guard and other National Guards, too, are putting up the fencing border along the Rio Grande. So Biden has been flying them in through secretive flights coming to the United States. That blows my mind that he gets away with this and still nobody stops it. You wake over there? Yep. All right. Just reading through the comments. Um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Marsock Render, I have a backpack. Make me feel like Dora the Explorer. Uh, you know what? It's your pet monkey boots, Marsock Raider. It's going to make you feel that way. There's nothing we can do. Uh, Lori asked this a couple times. Uh, is there anything natural you can take for pleurisy pain? Pleurisy? Yeah, that's 
I think is what it says. Yeah, pleurisy pain. Okay. I wish I could answer that for you. Um, I love naturopathic medicine, but I don't know a lot about naturopathic medicine. I'm I was not treated or treated. I wasn't treated either. I wasn't trained with naturopathy. I was trained with allopathic medicine. Um, and boy, I knew it too, like the back of my hand. I don't remember anything anymore, though. Um, I, I don't know. I wish I could answer that for you. Um, if you find out, let me know. Because I would love to actually, it's one of those things where I would love to start a course on naturopathic medicine, but I have to learn naturopathic medicine first, and I don't. There's some things I picked up here and there, but that is not my specialty at all. Um, uh. Dana says, with any military support from the U.S. for Israel, how might Russia respond? Would China also get involved? Um, I, China will get involved, but not how you, think it, how you think they will. China has no problem backing Iran. Um, however, China has its own bigger fish to fry in the Pacific anyway, as they're prepping for Taiwan. And that's what they're doing. So if anything happens between Israel... Russia, United States, other Middle East countries, whatever. China is simply going to go ahead and just say, you know what, now is the time since their attention's over there, and we're going to go ahead and take the opportunity to invade in Taiwan. And you know what, it's one of those things where it blows my mind that no matter how much our administration loves China, how much we're still taking that seriously. I should almost go through a video just talking about all the military advancements taking place, shoring up our military in the Pacific. And the news talks about how we have five carrier groups there now, five. That's almost half our carrier groups. That's a lot of power. But we're setting up bases in Australia, in the Philippines, in Japan, um, and some of the islands in between from Hawaii are basically, were basic, have been for the past few decades, just dormant because nothing's going on, are now becoming military bases again as we're preparing for this. So all this stuff's happening in the Middle East, and we seem to be shoring up a lot of military in that area. So I think with China, it's what's difficult, and this is obviously more on the geopolitic model, China wants to be the power coming up, and they want to bring in the other communist, Soviet, uh, the other uh, socialist countries joining in with this, like Russia. Russia has no problem with that. But Russia wants to be the dominant one because they want to be going back to their glory days. But China is the one, when you actually see the growth of China, it is absolutely the predecessor for imperialism. And I don't think, it's not a matter of thinking, once Taiwan's taken over, they're not stopping there. They are already doing blockades and majorly harassing um, the Philippines, which are not doing anything to China. But China and the South China Sea is completely blockading them, hitting them with stuff. It's pretty frightening what they're already doing. It's not going to stop with Taiwan. And it's going, that is going to happen in the Pacific too. But it's like the same thing. The United States, along with the other allies, fought the Nazis in Europe with Russia over there. Whereas the United States also fought Japan with like Australia and such on the Pacific and fought two battles, we're going to see the same thing again. We're going to see the Middle East. I think the Middle East and the Russia war is going to coincide in a lot of ways. And then we're going to see another Pacific war again, just like we saw in World War II. People change in sides, though. Even like Japan, too, which it's amazing how times change. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Germany. Germany is a very strong ally of the United States. A Chill and Penguin Army says, What type of radio do you do you recommend to stay atop of your local police, firemen, trucking airwaves? Fantastic question. Um, Fantastic. I wish I had the link for you, but the Baofeng dual pack radio, I'll see if I can find it. I probably can't. I'll talk, I'll talk as I look it up. You won't be able to find it that way, Hannah. Um, well, I know sometimes I, I save one. It's not there. Putting up. It's not there. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You're not going to find it that way. When you put it on here, I'll save it. So. <laughs> okay. So anyways, the Baofeng radios, they're pretty neat. It's not, and the thing is, I'm going to make it really clear, it's not just them, but ham radios specifically are set up so you can program them in there. And you probably, it sounds like you have this type of mindset, you remember the day where you could actually first buy crystals, and I'm not talking about the sandwiches, but you could actually buy the crystals to put into the programmable radios so you could actually pick up, um, oh man, it just jumped off here, I just had the code. Oh no. Um, 
you can put the crystals to pick up your local police department in the scanners. Do you have to do that out there? Back in the day, you put the crystals in there to be able to pick it up specifically. Have you done that? No. Oh. I was like, really? You really impressed me there, Hannah. Um, hold on, guys. This this silly, silly, silly thing. Oh, there it is. Sent me a code, a verification code. I should make sure it's in there. Okay. Uh, anyway, like... then as electronics grew, they changed it. So you don't need crystals anymore. But now they're actually programmable scanners, which I know a lot of you guys probably have. But if you actually buy the Baofeng, um, <laughs> that's me typing and not talking at the same time. Um, if you buy the Baofeng ham radio sets, they are actually programmable to do the same thing. You can program these babies to pick up local law enforcement. But, you know, the scarier part, you can press the little record button on there and talk to local law enforcement. So it's not just a matter of using the frequencies on there. And I almost have it now, ready for it. Wait for it, paste. So I just threw a link up for the Baofeng radios because they are so programmable that I can, and I literally just, I didn't talk to them, that's probably bad, even though I know like a, lot of local, lo, a lot of local police, but I put, put in a lot of the local police force um, frequencies in there, <coughs> and I could actually press the call button and talk to them, which would be illegal, it'd be a federal offense. But anyway, at the very least, you can program it all in there too. There are limitations though. There's only certain frequencies. It's up to like 500 megahertz, not above that, certain things. And obviously, if the police, some bigger police departments will actually scramble their their messages on there, which is smart for them. You'll pick it up as garbly stuff on there. You won't be able to hear them. But a lot of police and stuff are not completely um, scrambled anymore, so you can do that. I just saw a question. Do you guys have dogs? And that question just disappeared off here. We do. We did We did have three, but just recently we had to put one down, which absolutely broke my heart. Broke my heart. Um, but we have two. And it's really funny. I told a story about a year ago on the channel about how some people with nefarious reasons were coming to our door. And how do we know they're coming? Our dogs went ballistic. Mm -hmm. And this guy went ballistic on me and said, how dare you keep your dogs out there as far as lawn ornaments and make them sit outside? And I was like, I never said they were outside. Dogs hear things. When we live out in the country, we rarely even have a car come down our road, let alone people come down our walkway. Mm -hmm. The dogs know this stuff. Dogs are, at the very least, even if you have a little yapper, dogs hear things and will yap and let you know. Of course, the bigger dogs sound more threatening and some may actually even be bite more threatening, but having a dog is a really good thing. And if crap hits the fan, unfortunately, and this is like really, really sad, that's when you see countless amount of dogs let loose. And in these countries that have crap hitting the fan, hyperinflation stuff, you'll have massive roving packs of dogs attacking things. But I'll tell you though, if crap hits the fan, you wanna have a dog in your house. It does take some food, but the dog can actually eat a lot of the scraps you have. Yeah. Or you can go out with a 20 gauge and get some squirrels for your dog or something, you know, and fry up some squirrel vittles for your dog. There's things you can do. But having a dog is not useless. It actually has a lot of benefits to it. Oof. So many on here. Uh, Johnny says, I believe that Russia will take care of the nuking part for Iran. Very well might be. You know, I want to I tell you a little bit of uh, something interesting happened that, and you won't see this in mainstream media, parts of this you will, that Russia test fired an ICBM during when all this stuff happened when I put my news things out. At the same time, an ICBM or you know, any type of ballistic missile was actually fired from Iran. It was almost the same time. And that was not an accident. Because understand that Russia said, hey, United States, by the way, we're going to launch an ICBM. Just let you know we're testing out a new one, which these we let each other know, so we don't think we're going to be attacked. And there's no coincidence that Iran fired theirs almost at the same time to try to cause confusion to know which was the test and which was the real one. Because the United States, I'm sure our military was like, oh, look, we have, the, oh, we have two missiles launching. Hold on, can we confirm what's going on here? And again, the Israelis shot it down, but... Two were fired simultaneously, and Russia knew about this, obviously. And they either Russia set the date and said, hey, by the way, Iran, we're going to launch one. You should launch one at the same time just to cause problems. But that's what they do. Yeah, Russia is all part of this, too. You're right, Johnny. All right. 
I'm, I'm way behind, by the way. Somebody just said good night, Miriam. No, okay, no. so next Sunday? Good. I'd really see that for next Sunday for the newsletter. Oh, I see where you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm way behind. Uh, Karen says, can the military <laughs> come in and take your food if war breaks out on U.S. soil? The military cannot come in and take your food. They can't even come stay in your house. It is absolutely protected that we can we cannot... Soldiers cannot quarter themselves in your house or take your food without some type of approval. Because when we looked at our founding fathers, the founding fathers, this is actually when the British were here, could do that. They could take over your house. That now becomes their house. Your food now becomes their food. In fact, you are going to stay here and make this food for me. You're going to become a hospital, whatever they want to do. And so when the founding fathers set up our government, they purposely said, no, this will not happen here. However, the problem is it's set up now that if the president declares an emergency and under the emergency, they can now confiscate food and declare martial law that suspends habeas corpus and the typical rights that we have. And now they can do it, which goes completely against the founding fathers. But you know what? That's where we are now in America. It's a sad state compared to the, what was actually originally intended. Mm -hmm. So long story short, oh, now, wow, there's the question right there. I've, I've caught up. Long story short, right now they cannot do that. However, if a emergency act, an executive action is take place and martial law, then they can do it. Uh, how can You have an old Bearcat 1000? Bearcat 1000? That was a great unit. I loved that radio. Um, I found one of the yard sale a couple years back, so I still I have, I have one now, but I haven't like touched it or programmed it in quite a while. How do I make pool water drinkable? Um, put it in a cup. I'm just kidding. The difficult part with pool water is this. There's a couple things. This number one, if you have a pool, and I think you're probably talking about a chlorine pool, mind you, the chlorine, the sun will actually make it so it evaporates off, or I forgot the exact process. I don't know if it's a distillation process. But either way, the chlorine will eventually get depleted in your pool because of sunlight. Your pool, unless you're putting chlorine in there, will eventually start turning algae and stuff unless you keep adding chlorine to it. Now, could you take a nice big cup of pool water with chlorine in there? You could, but it depends on the chlorine levels. And that's where you're looking at. Because obviously chlorine, what you want to do is add chlorine to your pool or your drinking water to the point where it kills the organisms, but it doesn't kill you. You don't want to have so much in there in your drinking water that you're really taking high doses of chlorine. In fact, some people say you should never be drinking chlorine at all, period. One way to take care of this, by the way, and it's really simple, if your pool stays chlorinated, by the way, let's say you have enough chlorine for your pool for today, you put it in the pool, then crap it's the fan, quickly cover your pool so the sun can, can't hit it. It's going to stay fresh long if you do that. Simply take that water, put it through. You're probably going to need a two-stage filter. You'll probably need an activated charcoal filter followed by a semi-permeable membrane, which you're looking at um, a diffusion membrane. I'm trying to think the actual micron. If you can get down to probably a thousandth of a micron, it'll stop the chlorine. So that's actually kind of nice. So some different types of Water filtration systems will get rid of that chlorine for you. So that's the best way to do it. Could you take a scoop, scoop of pool water and drink it? It's hard to know how much chlorine you actually have in the in the pool itself. That's the problem. Uh, Sue says, don't pools also have algicide as well? So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the thing, too. Is It's not simply just a matter of the chlorine. But even the chlorine, using like treatments from pool stores and stuff, isn't always just straight chlorine you'll have additives and stuff in there. Not to mention, if you're putting algicide in there in your pool, which we've had a pool in the past, it's some things you do. I mean, will the algicide hurt you? I don't know. I don't have the answer for you. I don't want to drink it, but I guess if crap hits the fan and that's all I have is that pool water and there's a little bit of algicide in there, I would do it. I would risk it. If we're not getting any rain, you know, I'd probably do rainwater catching up first. If you have no other way to get water. Right, that's what I would do. Yeah, you're in the same area, so I kept scrolling back and forth, but okay, good. you're in the same area, so you might as well just... Jason says, don't eat people. <laughs> I mean, that's my policy, too. Except for vegans. I'll eat a vegan. Because they got to be like... They eat nothing but grass stuff. You ever eaten, like, beef? 
between the crap they feed the beef and the beef that eats like the, the grass fed, the grass -fed beef. beef. It's good stuff. I wonder really if cannibals can taste the difference with vegans. I don't know. I bet they could. Hmm. I bet you anything they could. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, Kenneth Martin has a question. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, possibly India. Yeah, India is funny. They keep flip-flopping, going back and forth between the United States. The United States has helped India lots of times in the past, and I think they're, they kind of feel morally bound sometimes. But there are certainly things that, like, Russia's doing that really makes India mad. Grass and they don't like that. People. I just saw something pop up. <laughs> a super chat just popped up. Oh, did it? Maybe that's what I saw. But that's at the very bottom. All right, we're working on... Hey, guys, I see the super chat with an L. For $10, I'll get to it in a minute. I, wanna, I don't want to skip questions. Toolmaker74, I'm worried that the draft is coming back. I will tell you right now, Toolmaker, if I were a betting man... I would say that it is coming back. I really do. I don't. If we're put into a world war, which I would bet money for sure, we're getting sucked into a world war. Um, they don't have the manpower to do it. It's that simple. So, the draft will be back. Um, why do a fair day if the grid is down? That's a good question, Gail. There are certain things you could put in your fair day cage that will still be helpful, like my uh, Geiger counter. That's a good thing. I still put my phone in there. I like the pictures of my kids. It's not gonna be, it won't be calling anybody. Uh, there's other electronics I have. I have like GPS equipment. I have solar generators. I have a whole slew of things that I can put in there that for me is important. I even like my laptops and stuff which keep information and stuff for me. That's what I put in there. But anything that you're gonna connect with the outside world, it's not gonna work for you. The young lady looks out of her mind. I'm just, I'm reading the is that comments. that you? I, I don't know. She is a little. Sometimes. Crazy. I'm completely joking. Nah, I'm this I'm, is my beautiful Hannah. There's I'm nothing tired, wrong with her. But I'm, I'm just sitting here reading <clears> comments. <throat> All right, here's a question from the Knights who say, Ni. I have to say it that way, by the way. <laughs> uh, Auto dismiss the nothings coming, so shut up and start liking stupid things crowd. Yeah, you have to auto dismiss them. That's, that's the difficult part. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Starfleet commands in the house. Welcome. Very nice. If you're just seeing that, you're definitely far back in the comments. Really? <laughs> yeah. From Dara, what does it good to spend my hard-earned money to prep if FEMA and or the military is going to come and take it all away from me? I know. You have to worry about that stuff. And that's why you do certain things so they don't get a hold of your stuff. That's. I'm not saying you should do that. You should abide by your leaders in the United States. Oh, did I do that on purpose? You should abide by the leaders of the United States and do what they ask. But if you happen to take your food and put it into food grade buckets and go to somebody else's property they'll never see and bury it there, I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> Redfish, Texas. Now straight leader, we have a baked potato. Did you read that earlier? No. That's funny. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah, and there's the pool water one. Okay, so I really am far behind. Yeah. Wait. What are you talking about you just sell the pool water? That means you only went through like five comments. Oh, I've gone through each one. Um, from Ray Dog Lock, can I recommend a good solar power bank that won't break the bank? They are stupid expensive, aren't they? They really are. Um, all I can do is I'll have to let you decide what breaks the bank because I have like a little Ocatel unit. It's a nice little unit, this big. Like when we go, we went to uh, the Prepper Show in Tennessee a couple years ago, and we were one of their speakers there. I used it to power some of the stuff we had. It was great. It's a great little unit. I don't think they sell it anymore, but it was fairly cheap, but it doesn't do a whole lot except charge your phone and small devices. You're not gonna get into like being beneficial. Like for me, powering my chest freezers, having like my Blue Eddy. I love my Blue Eddy. It's a fantastic device. And I have a Blue Eddy that literally could just keep my freezer going indefinitely, which is a beautiful thing. It's not going to break the bank, but it is expensive. It's not cheap. There's a lot of stuff put in these things. Um, then, of course, you get into the mangoes, which I talk about all the time, to power my whole house. They're, I mean, they are simply top-notch amazing, but they are costly. But there are some people who don't mind spending the money on that kind of thing. If you really want to find a way to do it without breaking the bank, you may want to consider just buying the parts independently. Pick up a couple RV or marine batteries pick up a solar panel or two from Harbor Freight Tools, get an inverter, a charge controller, and put your own stuff together. 
You may end up spending close to what you paid for some other stuff, but you can actually add on more batteries to it and it can actually become more effective in the long run. That's something you might want to consider. Uh, let's see. I think, I don't know, I might be really far back. Yeah. Uh, let me see from here. Um, from Johnny. Hey, Johnny. What do you think of the theory that the East versus the West will be one war, probably World War Three, that the Middle East will be another major war, possibly World War IV, a.k.a. Armageddon? Well, I mean, I, honestly, I use the term Armageddon sometimes, but I think when people talk Armageddon, they do connotate that with almost kind of like a religious war in the Middle East, which war in the Middle East is a religious war. Um, I don't know. I would say that if it happens at the same time, even if they're not connected at all, I think it's still going to be looked at as World War III. That's what I think anyway. Um, yeah, there's actually predictions that go back from people in the 1800s that supposedly did some like controlling of the world who said that there's going to be three major wars. World War I will be like this, and it was. World War II will be like this, and it was. And World War III will be coming out of the Middle East. Hmm. Do you know that? It's from the 1800s. It's interesting. very interesting. What said that in the 1800s? Uh, a, somebody had a prophecy. It wasn't a prophecy. They said that this group controlled the world oh, and they I have see. three world wars planned. Knight who says, me. Recent inclu uh, incursion, inclusion into my plans, in, 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 incursion, uh, buying a liveaboard sized sailboat and prepping to sail away when crap hits the fen. Just a suggestion at least a resort for you and yours too. No, Knight who says, me, we talk about that all the time. We used to live on a sailboat. You know, it was one of the things we did in our lives. We loved it. Absolutely loved it. There are certain things that are smart about that. But if there's a major war going on and you have a sailboat in the middle of the ocean and there's no flag on there, you're going to get boarded. International law or not, they'll board you. And if you are American and it happens to be hostile, they, they may be nice or they may sink your sailboat or take everything you own. It's, it's tough to say. But, you know, that is a possibility. I think the lesson from that should be this. I don't think preppers, preppers should discount anything. And I think brainstorming, looking for all possibilities like that is a smart idea. Having a sailboat just sounds fun anyway. We would love to have another sailboat and sail around. It'd be a good thing. I still haven't come up to the super chat, Hannah. Yeah, you're, the thing is you're really far back. Um, Marsock Raider wants to know what you do for a Klondike bar, Hannah. <laughs> oh. all right. I, I do love So guys, I'm scrolling a little bit faster. I hope I am not missing any of your stuff on here specifically. Although I just saw a question, I'm trying to scroll back up to see it. And I think it's gone. Yeah, it's... Oh, they sell five watt ones now, huh? Very nice. The Baofangs. Baofang has some really good stuff. I like their stuff. I still don't have the super chat. Yeah, the first one you're going to see is yellow. I'll, can I click on it? No, that's the wrong one. But I think you can't click on it. That's a super sticker. Oh, okay. We, we got, got two super stickers oh, it's the L, and yeah. super chat. So I see a super sticker from Betty and Rob for $10. Thank you. Appreciate that. Guys, I apologize for my <laughs> lack of computer functioning right now. I see this is a super sticker too. And there's one more above from it. From Solar Dependent for $0.99. Cents. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Remember that last time too. Thank you. I'm still scrolling up, still scrolling yep, up. There, there is. it is. <laughs> uh, Leon Trevino, good to see you. $10. Thank you for that, by the way. How will we know if water gets poisoned? Can we test for it and can it be filtered out? Can you test for it? Not likely. I mean, could you? Sure. But the amount of different poisons that could go in there, you would actually have to find the reagents for all those poisons, which, I mean, let me put it this way. Somebody dies of poisoning in the ER, we have a certain number of poisons we look for and if it's the poisons not in those schemes, you, somebody still got poisoned. But since we have certain very common poisons, the other ones will get, get away scot-free and we'll think it's a heart attack. Yeah. I'm certainly not telling you to do this. In fact, I won't tell you what those poisons are either. But that's the thing is when it comes to the poisons in your water, having the ability to test out all the different poisons for that is not very likely. Um, especially when you're simply just talking about chemicals, which aren't poisons purposely in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Um, can they be filtered out? Some many, oh sure, there's a lot of them that very well could be filtered out. There's a lot of poisonous substances like benzenes and stuff that are filtered out with some of the easiest filters. It's a poison, it was never intended as a poison, 
But a lot of the filters work very well. I always recommend, by the way, I mean, if you can, all you can get is a charcoal, or sorry, an activated, guys, my brain's already starting to get there. If all you can get is like a ceramic filter device, they work well, by the way. They do take out some of the larger molecules. Activated charcoal filters are pretty awesome, though, by the way. And that's something you might want to consider getting. You said the way to test is you let somebody else drink it first. Your neighbors. Yeah, find the neighbor you don't like. Take a bottle over there of water and say, listen, I just want to make amends. Here, drink up. Here, drink. Yeah, have some. It'll be fine. I am not saying do that at all, obviously. <laughs> we were joking. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get sued one day because we're going to kill our neighbor and say, well, hey, he told us to do it. Uh, someone said, can I just boil it? No, that's a fantastic question. There's a big misunderstanding when it comes to water purification. Chlorine and those little water tablets will kill off biological organisms in your water, which is good because they'll make you sick. That's why if you go, you're, if you're an American and you go drink the water in Mexico and you get sick, Montezuma, Montezuma's Revenge is the biological organisms. If you had those little pills, those little chlorine pills, or you took some bleach with you on your trip to Mexico and put it in the water every time you drank it, you'd be fine. Um, but then when we look at agents, like chemical agents, those things will do nothing for that at all. Chlorine in those, chlor in those little purification tablets do nothing for chemicals, nothing at all. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, Shiny Shinyman says some kind hey. of poison can be detected by putting a silver bar in the water and it can turn black if there's poison. Really? Interesting. Huh. I, I don't know. I'd like to try that out. Should send me a silver bar. <laughs> I want to see if that's true. Okay. See how I did that? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Shiny Shiman also asks, how do we get rid of fluorine, which is now commonly used for pool water instead of chlorine? Same thing. There's actually a lot of filters that will eliminate fluorine from your drinking water which is good. It's amazing. You know, the uh, Canadian Department of Health director, I think that was the person, was a big proponent, like most modern countries, saying you should put fluorine in the water to help your teeth. And they tried to tell him, look, you're wrong. This is not something you should be doing. You should stop doing this over and over again. And he said, nah, forget it. Then one day he goes, no, you're right. We should not be putting fluorine in our water. And then out he went. I don't know who it was. Generacs are good until the propane runs out. You're right, Lee. And that, that time is very quick, by the way. Generacs, at least propane tanks, you can get like what? What are they, like 350 pound tanks or gallon tanks that you can get? Will last a while. But I'll tell you, Generacs, they're fantastic, but they are fuel suckers. They're fuel suckers. Um, do I need to store my unplugged solar power panels in a Faraday bag too? I have them for my power boxes, but not panels. I don't. There are some semiconductors on solar panels, on some solar panels. And I'm not talking about the solar wafer to actually energize from the sun. I'm not talking about that. But sometimes there's diodes on there. But your solar panel, since it's not connected to the grid, has a drastically decreased chance of frying, if that's the case. More than likely, it'll probably still keep running. So I don't keep my solar panels in a Faraday bag. But I know some people who do. They actually buy one specifically for their whole solar array. Um, personally, I think I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but it is a possibility. I actually have a friend who has the part number for those diodes, so you can always, if you know how, what you're doing, I love that kind of stuff. You can just buy the diodes and replace them on there if that ever happens. Then you go through five hours replacing them all, done. Then another EMP hits. Ah, darn it. Um, you're right, Knight who saves the knee. You're absolutely, uh, as far as like the term Armageddon, you're absolutely right. But I'll be honest with you, I use the term Armageddon sometime. I always use it in a fun way, like, you know, have extra bars of soap so you can smell nice in the apocalypse or Armageddon. I guess I say apocalypse more. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about these forever chemicals? They're absolutely horrible, Miss Rage. And that is, that's something to rage about too, by the way. But we were already to the point where nothing you do about it. Can you remove the chemicals from the water? Some of them you can. Yeah, there's actually some activated charcoal filters that can remove some of these from the water. But these things are in a lot of stuff now, and it's estimated, I forgot the exact number, but a big chunk, like the majority of people in the world have those in their body now. And they're forever chemicals because they're forever. They'll never leave your body. They've really screwed us over. Mm. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, let's see. Lone Star Pioneering. Hey, Lone Star, you can use a microwave as a Faraday cage. You can. You absolutely can. 
Um, I always tell everybody, it really is true. This is not a wives' tale. Put your phone in whatever it is, and then from another phone, call your phone, and if it doesn't go off, it's a good Faraday cage. Your microwave works very well for that. Many things do. I have a person who's been talking with me through email, and she found a huge file cabinet and did it in a file cabinet, and the phone didn't ring. And people tell you, oh, you have to have the aluminum tape on there. That's not true at all because the actual microwaves that create the problems from an EMP actually have a height to them, and they literally can't fit through the cracks. It's weird for a photon. You wouldn't think it was, but that's how they work. Photons, which are the electromagnetic waves, go like this as they travel through the air, and if you have a slit too narrow, it'll block it. And that's why you can see your food in the microwave because there's the metal in the door and the, the little window there is enough to make it so the microwaves can't escape your microwave oven. There's other things in play too. That's not the only thing, but that's one of the reasons. Uh, let's see. Yep, Carla, you're right. They've been actually reworking the material to make it so they can recall the retirees back in. That's one of the first things they're doing. I mean, they always redo that material anyway, but they're purposely making it this way. Um, specifically with uh, retirees making it more easy, making it easier. I'm not going to stay on for much longer, guys. I'm really kind of crashing here. And then yeah, a just, super chat just down bah, the bah, bah, <laughs> from Carla Rutan. Thank you. Any reasons to not travel to Salt Lake City? Hmm. Right now, I mean, for me personally, here's it's difficult, isn't it, Carla? For me personally, we are not traveling anywhere outside of just a few hours drive. We're certainly not flying anywhere. Um, the biggest reason is we're actually heading into a solar maximum. If a large CME erupts from the sun, like an X40, like a Carrington event, it'll get here in 30 minutes. Even if you're not on the plane, you're in Salt Lake City, standing on the Great Salt Lake. Have you ever done that, by the way? I love staying in the Salt Lakes. It's so cool. There's not going to be a flight taking you back bad things are going to happen and you're going to be stuck away from your home and your preps. Yep. And in my case, the kids. So I don't think it's worth it. We are travelers. I love traveling. But I'm not doing it right now. Up till now and probably the next year or two years, I'm not going to be traveling anywhere major. I'll go like four or five hours away. Uh, I have get home bags in case I needed to get back home again. But we're not flying anywhere. But that's us. And I do always err on the side of caution you may not, and you may want to say, you know what, it's worth the risk going. That's probably your biggest risk you're looking at, by the way, is some type of CME, CME event. Hey, Castle Bravo, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Um, let's see. It says, will your refrigerator get fried in EMP? No, um, I mean, some of the newer fridges have semi semiconductors to them, and since your fridge is always plugged in, probably so, but it's not the EMP... On your fridge, it's the EMP current traveling down your power lines to your fridge that's going to fry it. But probably so. It'll probably get fried. I mean, understand, guys, if there is an alert that there's some kind of nuclear launch or EMP is coming or something, you can unplug your fridge and unplug your freezer and put your solar generator in a box and such. And then after it goes through, either plug it back in or hook it up to your solar generator. That is a possibility. Um, what else? Lots and lots of stuff coming in, guys. This is a great live stream. Uh, we got another super chat from Veteran Shiny. biker in the house. Hey, veteran biker. From Shiny well, Shinyman. And it said, uh, can you use the silver bar to detect some kind of poison in a water right? And it says the silver will turn black. So that's what it is. The silver turns black. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking the that's, water that's will No, I got the impression the silver turned black. Okay. Yeah, it's but not, thank not, you for the super some chat. Some type of oxidizing on it. Oh, it was a super chat that said yeah. that? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, see any more questions on there, Hannah? Um, I like randomly scattered throughout. Oh, yeah. Veteran Biker. I know you, Veteran Biker. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast the other day, and you were on that podcast. <laughs> How fun. Cool. Well, welcome, Veteran Biker. I'm glad you're here. Well, the coolest thing about Veteran Biker is I heard he actually did oh. Harley Davidson riding throughout Britain. That's that cool. would be fun. That's cool. I lived in Britain for a while, and I loved it there. Loved it. Um, but I do not own a Harley Davidson, nor a motorcycle at all. My wife, when we got married and we had kids, she goes, never again. And at first I was like, what? You can't. And I was like, no, you're right. I shouldn't have one. I love bikes, but it's not the bikes that scare me. It's the people who who uh, will nail you on the bikes. Scary, scary stuff. But that's just me. Uh, say, super chat for Buck 99. Thank you. Love the streams. 
We appreciate you, Veteran, veteran Biker. Uh, anybody, guys, Veteran Biker has a channel. If you ever want to check it out, go for it. And uh, so we'll say hi to him. Very nice. He stopped over here. Really nice of you. And uh, Ooh, we went from I'm, that, London to Russia. That takes me down to the bottom. Did we get all yeah, the questions? Well, I don't and know. look, and in five seconds, it's been an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, Writer Dust says only the military knows what DEFCON rat. One hundred percent, one hundred percent true. Writer Dust. Um, we can sometimes make educated guesses by depending on what the military units are doing in bases, but that is one hundred percent classified. You cannot let that information out. So anybody who tells you, by the way, we're at DEFCON 2, and they don't have any reason to back it up, they'll just say we're at DEFCON 2 because I've told them, don't believe them. That's not true at all. From Carla for Friday night, thank you. My kid has got to go to work, but I am mom and not happy. I understand. Being mom, and in my case dad, is really difficult in these situations, isn't it, with their kids? I suppose there's not much use uh, in a sale of anything at this point. Yeah, not much you can do about that. Uh, worry about my solar generator at EMP. It's too big to fit in anything. Makes a Faraday cage. I uh, love my peeps. We have a military surplus store. And I bought a massive ammo box. It wasn't ammo. It actually had explosive caps in it at one time. It still mm -hmm. smells like it. And my solar generator is fitting it. It's really, it actually is perfect. So you might want to consider that too. Um, anything else, guys? Uh, love my peeps asked a question. Is that the one I just answered? Love my peeps. And I definitely want to get any questions answered before I skedaddle for the night. I see a statement. WF can stick it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I don't want to cut it off unless we have a question we missed, but I don't see anything else on here. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Schmitty, thank you. But says this is the best community on YouTube. Thank you. I appreciate that, Schmitty. Um, Hannah, do you also have a belt in karate? Tell me, Hannah, what do you have? What color are you belt? Uh, is your belt? I think it's the second. It's the brown belt. She's a brown belt. But it's the second version. She has, right, she it. has like, ready for this? I'm going to end off with my Hannah, who I love and respect and adore. She's so busy with college. She only has like four or six months worth of training before she becomes like a recommended black belt. Mm -hmm. And so I've like, I made it very clear to her I would like her to finish that up. I'll finish it up. But on the but same note, I made it very clear to her that I respect her. And with school, and she's really busy doing all that stuff, I respect that. Yeah. And so one time, what she'll do is often, like, a summer will come around. She'll have some time. She'll get back into training. I, I can make it about one belt a summer. So it's, like, slowly, yeah. Yeah, just FYI, all of our, we have, we have a big family. We have lots of kids. I don't say how many we have anymore. Um, every one of us is in martial arts except for the baby and the second baby. We have one that's a little bit older than her. But she can't wait. She's always, like, watching us, kicking us up. But every one of us... Yeah, she, she, she loves playing with the bow staffs and stuff. It's adorable. Yeah, so we do everything with weapons and martial arts weapons. Regular weapons, too. Somebody just went by. I think it was Mom. Yeah. Mm. All right, guys. Oh, hold on, one more question. Uh, Knights who said, Ni. What style of karate does she do? I hope it's a non-sport one. And crap, it's the band fighting that will matter. Oh, you're so right about that. Knight, Knights who say, Ni. Um, we do both. And so to keep up the flexibility, to keep up the stamina for sparring matches, to keep up the techniques, we do have sport tournament sparring. But when I took over the dojo that I teach at, well, I teach at a couple, but when I took over completely, I decreased the amount of tournament and drastically increased the amount of real world self-defense training. Because I'm certified in that, too. And so Hannah has not done a whole lot of that. You've done a little bit of it, haven't you? Yes. Like some Krav Maga and stuff. I enjoy Krav, Krav Maga, though. You know, I've, I've, only, I've only done like one or two moves for some, uh, I don't remember what it was. But, but we do both. We do both. And I think it's important to do both. I mean, because number of the sports just fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fourth, fourth or fifth in the world right now yeah. in sparring. And uh, I, I was asked, I keep being asked by my instructor if, aren't you going to compete in Worlds? And I'm like, I'd have the heart to tell him, I don't, I'm not flying anywhere right now, I'm sorry. Even though, even though that would mean a lot to me, trying to compete for a world title, yeah. that'd be cool. But that's all it is, it's cool. It's just a medal on my wall. 
and to jeopardize possibly something happening while I'm out there competing, it just isn't worth it, especially going out with my family. No way. This is in Phoenix. That's quite a ways away from Michigan. So anyway, um, train in MMA any? Yeah, absolutely. We do um, Taekwondo. We do karate techniques. We do MMA overall. I've just mixed it up. We do, I specialize in Krav Maga specifically. We do Jiu-Jitsu techniques. We do, there's another one too. Oh, we actually even do boxing techniques too. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of mix all, all together. And I try to take some of the main ones specifically that will be the most impactful on someone's head in case you ever attack. That's what we do and focus on. And I even tell my students that in class because we have some younger students. I'll say, listen, I'm about to teach you a technique. You will never do this technique on someone unless your life depends on it. And because it's, they're, they're, they could be deadly, but I still teach them to my students. I think it's important for that to be the case. Goshen versus Mike Tyson. <laughs> have you guys seen that? Mike Tyson's going to spar against that MMA guy. So cool. Um, yeah. What modality would recommend for quick self-defense teaching? Shauna, if you have nothing else to go to, find a good school that literally just has a self-defense course. Personally, I, am act I steer toward Krav Maga. I think Krav Maga, in my opinion, is the best violent martial arts you can do to defend you and your family. It is literally insanity on someone if they try to attack you. That's what we do. All right. Uh, anyway, can you show a picture of the ammo box, Red Dust? I have. There's a video for it. Just do a, a search on YouTube. Not on YouTube, on my channel. Of Faraday Cage. Just type in Faraday Cage and watch it, and I have the ammo box on there. Would I fight Steven Seagal? I would not. I like Steven Seagal. I mean, would I do a sparring match with him? Oh, boy. I don't know. He's getting kind of old. <laughs> I say that lovingly. I like Steven Seagal. But... Uh, do I get to UFC? I do not. I, I actually train with some guys who do. And even just sparring with those guys, they scare the crap out of me. They're really good at what they do. Can a shed be an EMP protector? Oh, it sure can, Betty and Rob. Since it's already practically grounded anyway, um, you're going to have to just make sure that all the holes and stuff in there are not too big to let the things come in, like the EMP stuff come in. Mm -hmm. So just put your phone in there and try to call it. Ooh, Miss MK Jeep has a black belt in Krav. That's excellent. Who's your Who's your teacher, MK? I keep talking more. I need to go because my brain's <laughs> fried. But you guys, you guys know what you're doing. Five minutes before, I'm like, I'm going to go. Let's talk about martial arts and get me excited. <laughs> uh, Hop Keto. Hop Keto is awesome. Someone said, did you say fourth in the world? Yeah, fourth in the world. For my age group and my category and everything, fourth in the world, which blows my mind. Because when I actually went to the first tournaments, which ranks in the world, I went just to go to see if I do anything, and I came in second. It was I literally it was it was it was a black belt category. There was 18 of us, and I came in second. I couldn't believe it. And there were a whole bunch of them were cheering me on. I was like, "Why are you cheering me on? You guys are like my competitors and stuff." It was funny. John Whitman, I've heard of him. I don't know him. Can I do videos on Krav? Yeah, Maureen, that's actually one of my intentions as I go on with the channel is to start start showing some techniques, really simple techniques of, like, for example, getting out of, cho of a chokehold. I train with taking knives and guns out of people's hands. I love that stuff. I don't teach that to my students. Hopefully my 14-year-old student is going to not know how to take a knife out of someone's hand, you know. Um, but the other Krav stuff I do, like chokeholds and everything with them, but that actually is my uh, that is my intentions. All right, with that, I'm going to it's true. call it off for a night. We totally I, did a Midwesterner goodbye. What's that? It's where you're like, okay, bye. And oh, you just you keep talk talking, for keep like talking. 10 more yeah. minutes. Okay, no and you're doing it again. You're doing it right now. Minutes. Yeah. Darren Levine. <laughs> you just. <laughs> no, hold on. I'm trying to think if I know Darren Levine. How old is too old to start martial arts? You're in your 40s. That is not too old, Gray Woman. Uh, we actually have um, new students start, sometimes even in their 50s. It's pretty rare, but you certainly can. And what I always do is, like, I just had a student start in her 40s. And she's like, I'm too old. You're not. But I always tell them, first off, if you feel like you're doing something, you're not going to be able to do it, there's no embarrassment to say, oh, can I step out? There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, when you strike someone, do you hit closed fist or open-handed? I do both. Um, I do lots of closed fist. Um, I try not to do a lot of like the fancy like knife hands or ridge hands 
although they are effective in certain areas. Ridge hand chest strike will knock the wound out of somebody. Knife hand aortic crotch strike will knock somebody out. I love that stuff, but I do a lot of knife hands, upset knife, knife hand, hand punches, or sorry, palm heels. <laughs> up, yeah, some instructor I am, right? Palm heels. But obviously I do punches. But I teach my students, if you're going to actually hit somebody with a palm heel, just don't even do it this way unless you're advanced. Just do it like this. You're going to have much less pain on your fingers as you punch like this. So we teach self-defense classes. And I always tell, the, like, like women's self-defense, just go like this, right here. The, the things. Yeah, I know I'm still on, Ashley. Was that yeah, mom? That was, that was actually me. Oh, okay. All right. Anyways, guys, no more questions, guys. I've got to go. My brain is fried. Uh, I really, really appreciate this, guys. We will be on again next week, by the way. And, of course, more videos coming out this week. Um, yeah, I know. Before standing in, in the world, is it's a huge, huge thing. I'm first in the, my state. Um, I don't know about districts. No, we get it again. Don't read the comments. They're sucking me back in again. Just don't read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you. I'm not going to look anymore. I'm not looking. <laughs> thank you, guys. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks, everybody, for all the questions, all the yep. super chats, just for the good time and talk, talking to everybody. I really appreciate it. Bonsoir. I appreciate you being here. And we'll see you tomorrow for a regular video. But, of course, we'll see you next week for a live stream. I'm going to look yep. here. But I'm not going to actually read any questions. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.